Hello and welcome. In this video we will be showing you how to get up and running using the Node.js client with your GridDB cluster. So um, some prereqs for this would be obviously having your GridDB cluster up and running and we also need the GridDB C client. So we'll go ahead and get that first and then we'll move on to Node.js. So you can just grab the C client from the GitHub page. So there's actually um, an RPM available to make it super easy now. So let's just go ahead and get this installed here. So now it's installed in our user directory. Okay, perfect. So it is there. So next we'll get the Node.js client. So actually um, now this client is available on NPM to make it super easy. So we can just install using normal npm commands. So um, let's do that. So let's init a project here. Doesn't matter, yes. Okay, and then we will run the command. Perfect. So now if you look here, the Node.js client is installed, ready to go. Okay, and so just one small caveat with using the GridDB Node.js package is um, you have to make sure your node is version 10, um, as you can see listed here. So right now mine is version 8. So if you use NVM, it makes it super easy to switch. So now we're good. All right, so last thing before we delve into some sample code is we need to set up our environment. So we just need to do one thing. So we just need to set our load library pointing to our C client. So to do that, you just need to do as so. So our C client was in here, I believe. In live so we need to show these specific files the grid store h the grid store header file and the, the the library grid store file so once we do that our node.js will now work with grid db so let's go ahead and take a look at some sample code here so it's very very simple so um yeah okay so first we need to obviously import our grid db library and we also need to import our file system library through node.js uh, here we need to insert our GridDB credentials. So uh, I guess the only thing of note here is that make sure that um, everything is a string and then make sure that the port is actually an integer, not a string, because it'll it'll give you problems if not. Um, next, we will define the schema. So here we're doing two different containers, one collection container and one time series container. So our collection container is here. Uh, we're just doing a person with a name and age, string and integer, and then for our time series container, we're doing a heart rate that we'll fill with dummy data. Um, so this one will have the row key as a timestamp, and then it'll also have a heart rate and activity while measuring heart rate. So first we will deal with the collection container. So this is what it looks like when you want to um, put data into your container. So first we call that container and then we um, set the index and then we um, actually insert into the container so here we're putting John age 30 into our container and then you commit that and then you well for now we're gonna run a query so the query will be just select where the person's name is John which will obviously return this and then if you want to uh, read the results back you here and then you catch the errors. So then we will log the results. And the next step is a time series container. So it looks very similar, obviously. So here um, we're putting in the data as the date object as the row key. So for right now, and then we're just doing a, a resting heart rate of 60. So then we want to run a query. So the query will be um, select data where the time is greater than six hours ago. Okay, and then uh, same thing, we, we're going to run the query and return all the data, print it out to the console, and then we'll catch the errors. 
So very, very simple. So we can just run this. If you want to see what it looks like. Oh, perfect. So we're going to go ahead and put all the information in the description down below. Relevant links to the website and to the code itself. If you have any questions, please feel free to comment below. Thank you for watching.